All right, it's Python on hardware time. Blink up, blink up, blink up. Yeah, you'll see some familiar things here, Brandon. Awesome. So we are celebrating 200 libraries. Yay! It's actually 201 now. Probably. But yes. <laughs> At least 200. At so least 200. This is a big milestone for us. Uh, a lot of people, the reason they like CircuitPython is because everything just works. There's lots of libraries. Uh, similar to why folks adopt Feather if they want a GPS. Not only is there the hardware, but there's a software library for it. So uh, thank you to all our community contributors and our entire team who have been working on that 200 libraries. It's a big deal. Um, this is some experiments we're doing. This is called the Magic Light Bulb. It's a Bluetooth Low Energy Light Bulb, and we are controlling this via CircuitPython. So we're working through all the services that Bluetooth has, and we're getting our CircuitPython devices to work with it. Um, this is from a community member. Uh, they have a Feather, and they're doing the hide and seek because they said, I don't have two Circuit Playground Blue Fruits, so I'll make uh, my Bluetooth Feather and my uh, Bluetooth Circuit Playground. They have one of each. They have one of each. So the so closer proximity you get, sensing. Yeah, yeah, so it's a neat little proximity sensor with that. So you can do all this stuff with a feather and also with a circuit playground blue fruit. Arturo was busy and this is a circuit python driven cube and uh, he was working on this cube. I think it was from a fellow independent maker and after he assembled it he's like well I gotta test it so he was running circuit python on it. So nice. toss that in there. We have a new uh, board that's supported in Blinka, and Blinka is our circuit python for Linux. Um, so this is a cool. Home. Yeah, we, this is one of those USB. It's your, a host adapter. Yeah, it's a host adapter that it's a like a toolkit for lots of different. Yeah, things. so this is actually kind of a a lower cost and more open and scriptable version of the kind of host adapters that um, the company that does Beagle. I can't remember their name. But um, they make these little adapters that basically you plug this into your USB computer and then you can run a Python script to control I squared C or SPI or GPIO devices. So they basically made one and uh, it's now CircuitPython Blinkit compatible, which means that you can run all of those 200 CircuitPython libraries from your computer. So again, like if you want to automate testing or analysis of hardware from a computer, you don't want a microcontroller in the middle, you plug this in and it's USB in one end and then GPIO on the out. Okay. Uh, this is neat. This is a board that a uh, person made, and it is a random number generator. Yes, and there's a random pixels. Yes. <laughs> and you can, uh, it's based on a Trinket M0, and you can get the code on GitHub, and you can learn a little bit more about it. Real, really random. On our site and on the newsletter. Um, this, we're going to show a video later, but this is kind of neat. We're getting closer to being able to just run Python absolutely everywhere. And this is the MCP2221 USB to I2C converter yeah. that you're working on? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, we've had the FT232H, which again is a USB to GPIO converter. And we love the FT232, it's, it's wonderful. But it's a little expensive. Uh, it is fast. It does, um, I think it does high speed USB maybe, but it's, it's a very fast chip. But maybe you just want something that's low cost and simple. Uh, so the MCP2221A is like a dollar 25 and it gives you usb on one end and then i squared c on the other and then we just got this working with blinka as well carter and i we we had fun reverse engineering the usb protocol which was not very well documented uh but we got it working and so you can um we're in a couple guides now on how to use jupyter notebooks with this device you can run circuit python libraries yeah. from jupyter and notebooks and we'll have a little sneak peek video at the end of the show yes. um Make has a bunch of circuit Python in it. Make, my old job. Uh, Make is back, by the way, and they had two things in it. This is Geekmom projects, and also in the toolbox section, it has our ruler that happens to be Python powered. The latest issue is called Fix Our Planet, and Make is now shipping magazines again. So it was good to see Make shipping and also some circuit Python stuff. Ada boxes are out there. Don't forget, you can order one. Um, we just had a couple openings because uh, we're shipping right now, but folks are getting them. So um, look away if you don't know if you don't want to know what they are. <laughs> um, but there's some surprises. Special thanks to Matt and team who uh, post up the Melbourne MicroPython meetup. There is three months worth of videos and notes and more. Um, probably one of the the, the best resources and uh, the most active communities in the world of MicroPython. Join the Laura Alliance! Yay! Yay! Um, I'm always nervous when organizations have us as members. But this worked out. I would um, never join an alliance that would have yeah. me. <laughs> um, but we join. We do a lot of things with CircuitPython and the Things Network, and we have a lot of LoRa hardware 
And so we just wanted to make sure that they knew about us and we also had a way to get in contact with them as we do more stuff with Laura. Um, speaking of, uh, Andreas, who did a great video about CircuitPython, just released a uh, video a couple days ago. Public LoRa satellite doesn't work. So there is a public LoRa satellite that, as it flies over, folks can, uh, I didn't know about can that. tune into that. Yeah. That's cool. It is pretty cool. Um, this is also neat. This is the Ant and MicroPython. So these folks, they have a, um, it's like a milling machine. PCB milling machine, and they wanted to show that they can make a, a fully it's functional a pie board. Yeah, fully functional uh, board that comes out of it. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Um, our friends at Numworks, they have a contest. So this is a MicroPython powered calculator. And if you do a cool script, um, you can win something. You, you can draw, they have a drawing program with yeah, Python. Yeah, you, can, you okay. can you can actually just make little reindeers and all that stuff. The other thing that I found out is there is an emulator for iOS. So technically, you can get MicroPython on iOS, which is super weird because normally I, Apple doesn't allow emulators inside, but hmm. for programming languages. But for this, they did. So I'll show that to you later. No, I thought weird. that was cool. Um, this is a book that uh, Evan is working on at the Raspberry Pi Foundation. This is Coldly Classics, and this is all games that you can do. Uh, with like Pi Zero and uh, Pi Games, Pi Game, Pi yeah. Gamer Zero, and you can um, write, make your own uh, classic games. Well, that's cool. Melissa showed this off on the show until this week, but this is using Pillow and animated graphics to show this on a Charlie Plex bonnet. Folks are making their own games, so we have a bunch <laughs> of edge badges out in the wild, and people are making their own. Uh, I think this Minesweeper, this is Dave Estelle's game. They loaded. The other no, game, this, this one is, they wrote another one? They, yeah, okay. this is another one. And there's a whole well, series of games. Yeah, this is from Mr. Floaty or Floaty Guy. Floaty Guy? Okay. Yeah. Um, and the, speaking of Edge Badge, uh, Alex over at Hackster was at the ARM AIoT Summit. And uh, this is just another neat example. Uh, this is a Feather compatible, speaking of Feather earlier in the show. Um, this is a machine learning conference badge, so it can do voice recognition right on it. And then this is a Tamagotchi CircuitPython device <laughs> where you can uh, feed a little cat into different things and uh, powered by CircuitPython. This was a fun surprise. Um, someone made a really neat NeoPixel resin cube and when you put it on a wireless charger, yep, it lights up. Ooh. That is cool. I kind of, yeah. this is the kind of thing I kind of imagine, like, it shows up in, like, the Planet of the Apes, like, <laughs> thousands of years later, they're like, no. what is this technology? We worship this cube. <laughs> um, this is uh, a board that allows you to do conversions from the Quick2 wire to Circuit Python Blinka. Yeah, somebody made an, a, they made Blinka compatible libraries for the Quick2 wire boards. So this company uh went out of business i think where they they closed shop but they were making raspberry pi accessories like hardware accessories that were kits um and so somebody uh we already have libraries for most of these things like this chip i think is the mcp yeah. or pcf something something so we have a library for this chip already so they just wrote up examples using blinka because i think the quick to wire libraries might be uh not python 3 compatible or something okay um Handheld game design workshops are starting up at STEM Cell Robotics. This is in Norwell, Massachusetts. If you have a person in your life, especially a young person, who would like to take these courses, we have all the information on our site. Uh, one of the things that is important to us when we start CircuitPython is can artists use it? Well, uh, this artist, who folks may remember from um, a previous project where they took a um, recalled toy and had the recalled toy with a Pi portal on it that did a um, broadcast of all the recalled toys. Um, this is called Engineered Sandwich, a small rechargeable freestanding light emitting sculpture. It's 3D printed, um, it fits between two little uh, wood buns, and a CircuitPython uh, script controls randomly, uh, RGB LEDs, so another cool little art project. Um, we like artists being able to do stuff they want with light. Also, um, a couple guides and more. There's an MQTT. Uh, data logging zero to hero with Circuit Python and MQTT. That's over at Hexer. The Orange Pi is still cranking along. This is another Feather compatible. Um, Bluefruit is getting out in the world, and so what people are starting to do with it is make Bluetooth controlled dog collars. Well, that's a good so, idea. Yeah. So this dog has its own Bluetooth uh, collar that you can control with a Circuit Playground Bluefruit Express and/or your phone. Um, this was some of the tests we were doing. This is the TFT Gizmo with the Circuit Playground. Uh, Bluefruit, and uh, we were able to get some connections, so I took some quick photos. Um, if you zoom in really close, you can see the food delivery that I had ordered is late, and it told me that on my little device. Good. And <laughs> that is it for Python on hardware. Lots of libraries. Yeah. Up to 250 soon. Okay.